This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. And Inter Miami with the one and only Alex Winley from the Heron Outlet. She ready to go. There she hello, is. Hello. hello, hello, hello. Did you feel like honored today that the king <laughs> and finally he gave you some time? Yeah. No, honestly, but uh, yeah, I think as media, we are really glad to at least just get to talk to Messi after what, a month and a half of him being here. So I think that was good to get his perspective on a lot of things and answer some questions that we wanted to know, especially the one about uh, him playing on turf. And now we we got the answer to that. He will play on turf, which is uh, good news for, you know, we all Atlanta fans and New England fans, you know, he'll be able to play there. But yeah, it was really cool to experience that. And honestly, I, I got the last question, which I wasn't expecting to. That's why I was uh, stumbling a little bit but you know uh, uh other than that it was a really cool experience and he um answered some questions we wanted to know all right so he's gonna play on artificial turf so obviously <laughs> that's cool um w what kind of questions did you ask him how long does he plan to play does it does it is he gonna live out this contract or could he play more did, was that asked at all because, you know, after these couple of weeks, no, because, uh, uh, only two more years is not enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the way, especially the way he's playing. Um, but, yeah, we actually um, uh, got some of uh, uh, those answers uh, previously from uh, uh, Jorge Mostad mentioned it a couple of times beforehand that, yeah, yes, Messi will see out his contract. Uh, he won't retire early. He will be an Inter-Miami player for the duration. He won't be loaned out to Barcelona or anything. So, um yeah, I know people are a little worried, but uh, no, he's he's here for the long haul. Uh, speaking with him today, he seems very happy. Him and his family, you know, they love the city, they love Miami. You know, it's very uh, culturally similar to Argentina in the sense that there's a lot of Latinos down here. And he mentioned that in the, in the press conference. So, yeah, he looks super happy. And, um, yeah, I think he, he honestly looked happy to talk to the media and really calm about it. So, uh, good day, good day. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's pretty cool to see. That. I just would like to do for for him to do it often, like you know, every week or every other week at least. Uh, stars talk in this in this in this country. Every star, and no matter how big you are, you could be Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, LeBron James, you name it. It doesn't matter who you are; they all talk. You know what I mean? So I just think it's really cheesy that it took him a month to. To kind of talk, I hope that he addresses you guys more often. It's not like, you know what? It's not like he's going to have to deal with any kind of big controversies or anything like that. Life is good for him. He's, dude, he's the face of the of the league, not just Inter Miami. He is now the face of the MLS. Yeah, and it's uh, I don't I don't know. I really I don't know if he'll speak to the media, you know, as often. But I think. Uh, during big occasions like this, they're like the Leeds Cup final or heck, even the U.S. Open Cup final next week if Miami beat uh, Cincinnati in the semifinals. I think in bigger occasions, yes, this will happen. But, you know, Messi throughout his career was never known to really speak to the media. But, um, you know, I think this was kind of a one-off thing. But, uh, yeah, it was a, a cool to see and privileged uh, media members or all, most of the media who applied. Uh, yeah, we were able to get, ask him some questions. And, yeah, it was just cool to see and hear his perspective. Uh, talk to the fans on the the honor to be invited to Copa Libertadores. I think that is so cool, you know, because that that that's a, a, an awesome you know um, uh, honor. But now they're going to be you know because of Messi, Inter's now going to have these opportunities that very few teams in this country have to showcase their team. And maybe even strengthen it even more down the line with talent. Oh, muted, 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 muted. Oh, my apologies. I think this iteration of Miami and the current Copa Libertadores would, uh, I, I think MLS rules need to expand a little bit more for the rosters to be a little bit more fleshed out for that to happen because I just see. Miami going away to like a Palmeiras or a, or a Boca River and not, you know, just because of the money gap between the two leagues, I think it'll, it won't end well for them. But I think next season, if we get those uh, expanded roster rules that people keep alluding to, but maybe not even happen, 
uh, yeah, maybe it'll it'll benefit Miami. But um, yeah, it'll be a cool experience to uh, to experience that different footballing culture in South America and to bring and to bring that to MLS and a wider American audience. So I think that'll be really cool. Alex, uh, what do you know about any rules changes? Because obviously, um, the, I know Jorge Mas wants to have you know the best possible team out there, but. Uh, the league has to see the impact that Messi's making, the money that he's bringing in, whatever city he's going to go to, he's going to pack your stadium. We just saw Philadelphia had their highest attendance ever, and that's going to happen. And so how do you, if your owners around the league, how do you not say, well, you know what, maybe it's time for us to start buying some of these stars around, you know, uh, around football in the world and bring them here so we can take the MLS to the next level so what are you hearing about rule changes around the league so far? Yeah, I think, you know, The Athletic came out with a really good uh, article about how, um, you know, these rule changes will probably happen incrementally. I know Philadelphia coach Jim Curtin mentioned that, you know, he does want those rules to open up a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm sure other GMs around the league will say the same thing. But I, I do believe I, I haven't heard anything that's concrete. But I, I do believe that, you know, the rules will change sooner rather than later, you know, with Messi coming in. I don't know if you saw, but Anton Griezmann, who is a, you know, sort of like an American at heart, he expressed his interest to play in MLS. And he's a big, big time Euro Euro uh, excuse me, European player, World Cup winner, currently with Atletico Madrid. So that would be cool to see him go to MLS, whether it's, you know, with a New York team or LAFC or or or, or, or wherever. But um, I think it'll be really cool to, to see that. But. Um, yeah, I think the league, it'll happen incrementally and maybe not all at once next season. But I do think, personally, this is just my feeling. I do think something will happen uh, early 2024, just something. I don't know if it's going to be huge, but I think some roster rules will uh, kind of change a little bit. I, I know that um, the allocation money, I think it is going, going to, um, how do I explain, like the allocation money, it's going to like increase by another million. So, I, But that's like built into the CBA. So um yeah, I have nothing concrete, but I do think that the league will definitely be moving some things. Yeah, yeah. And and by the way, Miami also gets some money back next year because they they get some space back, right? Because their 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 fines and their penalties end this season. So they'll have a little bit more uh, allocation money, right? Yes, the sanctions will be done and they'll have uh, all of their allocation money uh, to spend. Unlike the, the net last two seasons, they were kind of – Hamstrung, but Chris Henderson did a good job at uh, you know moving players around and, and freeing up some of that money. So I, I think we'll be uh, the team will be good to go on next season. Uh, Even better. Are, <laughs> are you impressed with some of these young guys that they're they're coming along a little faster now? When you have that other talent on the field, the super talent, and the vision that these guys have, you know it's making life easy for them, but. I thought that the the final goal the uh, the other night in Philadelphia, where Messi just made the first pass to initially start the play, but everybody else really created and finished that play with a young guy finishing it, and I thought that's a great example of the influence that Messi and Busquets have had. That now we're watching. I mean, Alex, man, passing was like a rarity for Inter Miami. They didn't have people that would set each other up and all that kind of stuff. But hell, you and I have talked about it, how you had to have one guy that was on, on the outside become your, your point guard a couple of years ago. You didn't really have playmakers. Now you have several guys that can help set everybody else up, and it's become kind of like a, an infectious thing on the team. Yeah, and that's the messy effect. And Busquets and Jordi Alba, they draw in defenders and then guys like Robert Taylor, David Ruiz, uh, Yedlin, uh, heck, even Joseph Martinez will benefit from the attention that those three are, are bringing in. And, and it's it's cool to see, you know, the homegrowns, uh, you know, show up and play well. You know, it, it's it, not many MLS teams bar like Philadelphia and a couple of, of other, you know, teams like Dallas, they have a good academy. You know, Miami, they're they're – starting to get up there with their, their players now. And, and it's cool to see, you know, uh, covering them from, you know, Inter Miami CF2, uh, the Academy, Inter Miami CF2 now with the first team. Uh, yeah, it's super rewarding. And now they're, they're playing next to Messi and their stock is going up because they're playing next to guys like Busquets, Messi, Alba, you know, Ben Hakramashki a couple months ago, he had Bundesliga scouts uh, watching him. And I can't imagine now what his, his agent's going through uh, 
uh, now that he's playing well and, and assisting and, and starting uh, starting over some well-known guys like, um, you know, Diego Gomez, who came in on big money, and now Ben Hakramaski starting over him. So really rewarding to see it. Hopefully, you know, that trajectory for Miami's academy um, continues. I doubt he disses anything, but somebody's asking, and I doubt he answered this, and I don't think he would ever answer this, even if it was true or not. But did somebody ask him if he's enjoying Miami more than Barcelona? Oh, no, but um, he did mention that he's enjoying Miami more than Paris. He oh. explicitly said that. Yeah, he, he did. Wow. He said the move from – yeah, he did the, the move from Barca to Paris was difficult for him and his family, and, and the way he's speaking about Miami, I'm just assuming that he, he – that definitely he's spoke, speak, spoken about Miami – in such like flying colors and he loves it here, him and his family. And they're, they're really enjoying it. Like he spoke about it multiple times, albeit he was asked about it multiple times, but he, he doubled down on it. And yeah, he's just enjoying his time. He looked relaxed and he was, he, you know, he laughed at my question cause I was stumbling over my words, but like he was just super chill about it. And yeah, him and his family are just enjoying the life down here. Did you guys ask him how he's made it look so easy? I wonder how he would, it, because how does he answer that? But, you know, because he has made it look, you know, we saw Chicharito like struggle big time to adjust, you know, to the league. Iguain and too. We, uh, Iguain too. And we, we thought, you know, hey, even Beckham said, hey, you got to give him some time and all that because Beckham knows he's been part of this. He's seen other guys come from other leagues. And it's kind of, you know, even though they're not the Bundesliga and they're not Serie A and they're not the Premiership and I get all of that. But it's still a league that you have to adjust to. Man, there's been no adjustment. So uh, did you guys ask him about that? And I wonder how he handled that. He, we uh, Well, I didn't, but uh, people did. They asked about the adaptation period. And, um, yeah, he said it was, you know, he's been playing soccer all his life. So, you know, it's been a good uh, adaptation for him. And it's a new challenge. But, you know, Messi is Messi. And he's going to succeed wherever he goes. And, um, he's showing that in, in MLS and in, and in Leagues Cup. So, um, yeah, he basically said it's it's he is adapting, but, you know, off the field, him and his family are super comfortable. You know, he mentioned that his sons are starting school soon. You know, it's back to school, which is crazy. Imagine being a kid and, and your t your classmate is the son of Leo Messi. <laughs> I, I just think that, yeah, the, the visual that is really funny. But, yeah, him and his family are super comfortable. They're looking for a house. And, yeah, I think uh, the, the club made it really easy for the three of them to – transition down here into like kind of being locals essentially and it's showing on the field because they're they're playing out of their mind right now uh nashville has been a solid team from day freaking one as an expansion team and i remember when they first came in and they were just so much better prepared than miami and they made miami look really silly uh early on now miami's got a really good team but we got to give nashville a lot of credit uh, they're in the finals with Miami. Uh, talk to me about this challenge on Saturday night on the road for, for Inter Miami. Although we've seen a lot of pink on the road, which has been pretty cool. But, uh, and I would imagine we're going to see some pink in Nashville on Saturday. But talk to me about that challenge for Inter Miami. Yeah, it'll definitely be a challenge. I, I, thought the, I thought the Union game would be a little closer than I expected. Honestly, I thought Philly would play a little bit better, but that first half of the way they set up, it was, you know, not, you know, Miami took advantage, but I think Nashville, they won't do that. I think they will play their game. You know, they're a very strong defensive team. I think they'll run the offense through Hani Mukhtar and, and their number nine. I think, you know, if Miami loses the ball at midfield or, or in that, that middle half of the field, I think Nashville will not hesitate to counter and, and go very direct at their goal. They'll have their fans behind them, albeit, um, of course, you know, there will be swaths of pink and, and messy fans in the audience, uh, in the crowd. But, yeah, it'll be a, a hard game for Miami. But they also said it, the Philly game would be very difficult, and they end up smashing them 4-1. So um, the sky's the limit with this inner Miami team, especially with Messi leading the line. He has his aura and presence. Uh, I definitely felt that today. It was really crazy and surreal to see. But, you know, I think a lot of players get nervous and – yeah, yeah, Orlando tried to trip him up, you know, and try to get in, into his head, and, and so did uh, uh, Martinez, uh, that Philly, uh, Philadelphia defensive midfielder. Philly midfielders. was getting some dirty shots. Philly yeah, was at the end there. They yeah. were getting some dirty shots in there, bro. I mean, early on in end. that game, they tackled one of our guys right from the back, and the guy's like, that's a foul? And I go, what do you mean? It's not, 
you tackled the guy, bro. What the hell are you talking about? They they uh, they got a little frustrated, man, uh, and they were taking some dirty shots. What do you see? I'll let you go with this, Alex. And Alex Winley, by the way, catcher work there at Bleacher Report, AAW underscore 1998, and the Heron Outlet. Also subscribe to that. They do an excellent uh, job. What do you see tactically that they're trying to do to slow Messi down? What is it that specifically we should look for that you're seeing on the pitch right now? I think they have to do with that what Dallas did. I know Messi scored uh I, I think it was a two goals, I think, in that game. Or, or he had a brace. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he had a brace in that game. So I think I don't know. You can't really stop Messi. You can limit him, but he'll still get an assist or a goal somehow. So I think it's try to limit Busquets, but even then Busquets will find room. And it's this, you can't really, I, I remember reading this one quote, I think it was from uh, an athletic journalist. I, I don't know which one. I think it was Billy the Cardinals. He, he talked about, you know, you try to, you know, uh, or maybe it was Matt Doyle from MLSoccer.com. It was one of them, but they talked about trying to uh, defend this Miami team is like plugging one hole and another one pops up. You can't fully defend them. And I think right. that's what Nashville will attempt to do, but Miami haven't not scored in this League's Cup tournament. And, yeah, I, I, Nashville does have a great defense, defense, but, you know, and they have U.S. men's national team caliber, you know, defenders as Walker Zimmerman and, and Shaq Moore, but they they haven't faced a, a person like Messi before on the field. And it's really surreal to to see him and seeing him in person on the field. You know, it, it, it takes on a different magnitude. And his movement and intelligence, it's it's really crazy. So, they can try to limit him, but I it'll be difficult. But, yeah, we'll see. We will see on Saturday. Uh, Alex, uh, when will we get Gregory back? Oh, that's a good question. He's been a little quiet on social media, but I think he'll be back around the same, to- around the same time as uh, Jean Mata, who is back in training. And um, I don't know when exactly, but I, I feel like it will, it will be before the end of the season, maybe in an, in an MLS game, but. Um, he'll be back before the season. I know he's definitely almost fully healed now. There you go. Follow her on Twitter, AAW underscore 1998. Catch her at the Heron Outlet and also Bleacher Report. Alex, is always, great insight. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on. I apologize I couldn't find good Wi-Fi, but, you know, thanks for having me on. <laughs> it was great. It was fantastic. I appreciate you. Thank you for, for making the effort. Appreciate you. Have a great weekend. I'll see you, Orlando. You got it. Be good. There you go. Alex Winley, who does an excellent job for the Heron Outlet for the Bleach Report covering Inter Miami. She knows her stuff, man. She's good. Really good. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.